below on the nostalgia guy remember it so you don't have to when you're a kid a lot of strange stuff seems normal ninja turtles was average tea parties on the ceiling was mundane and being forced to dance in a banana suit dripping goat's blood was just tuesday oh only my parents had me do that i should have asked more questions regardless a lot of those things when you get older seem charming some of them some you put in the whimsical enchantment category, others you put in what the hell was I thinking watching this category, and then there's those you don't know where to put. Japan's 1974 English dub of Jack and the Beanstalk falls into that category of not knowing the category. Like a fair amount of kids, I grew up with this bizarre adventure on VHS. It was available at a lot of rental stores at the time. We watched it, it kept us quiet, and then we go about our everyday lives. But what we didn't know was that what the Christness was leaving an impact on our memories that years later we'd say, was that really as friggin' insane as I remember it? I'm here to report it friggin' is. It starts off similar enough. Jack is doing his chores, skipping through the woods, usual fairy tale benignness. We find out his dog used to be part of the Grand Army. I think he has a symbol on his collar that's similar to an army he fantasizes about in the clouds. So there's that. Trust me, that's the least of the questions you will be asking while watching this. And part of the course, Jack is asked to sell the cow and comes across a mysterious man playing a... what I can only describe as a 70s machine. Neither that or the sound Pac-Man makes when he's jerking one off. So Jack laughs. And then the man laughs. And then he laughs again. <laughs> and then he... <laughs> Thus, Chris Hansen's number was put on speed dial. He, of course, sells him the magic beans after doing a squat dance. <laughs> you said it, cow. Which, of course, leads to... Big shock. <laughs> he seems nice. This pisses off the mother who punishes Jack in a common, yet still uncomfortably focused on manner. You foolish dunce! You rockhead! I'll teach you! Thanks to you, we're penniless! How are we? How will we live? How are we to become beggars? What will become of us? I've worked up an appetite. Child abuse just rumbles my tummy! Mm, me too. That's just confusing. She, of course, tosses them out the window, resulting in the beanstalk growing in one of many weird-ass songs. Is that thing going to happen? You're silly if you think it not. But always there must be a time when dreams come true. If you believe such nonsense, if you believe Is the nonsense, beanstalk you singing? In duet? Jack wakes up seeing the incredible creation and, of course, climbs up the beanstalk or a mouse princess climbs down it. As the story goes. She explains what happened to her in great detail, but there's one problem. It's told entirely in squeaks. Mm -hmm. I haven't been so happy to not have subtitles since the Star Wars Holiday Special. We agree never to play that again. Finally, Jack does climb the beanstalk and comes across a pretty, yet somehow disturbing image. <gasps> She has a face that says, I just joined a cult, and it's going great. This is Princess Margaret. She literally floats on a cloud saying, well, random things. My parents were destroyed by an evil witch. I don't think about it. It's been a long time. I'm happy now. Jack, you have the worst stranger danger. Tomorrow I'm marrying my wonderful Prince Tulip. No. Like reaching up to touch the sky. I'm right so is she a ventriloquist or is this just the song she's hearing in her mind right now? Why don't you come into the castle with me, Jack? I know Madam Hecuba would like to meet you. She says the prince's kind and beautiful mother would be happy to meet him, but discovers she's not that. <laughs> that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that uncomfortable fever dream you had two weeks ago. A human child. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, it's been such a long, long time. <laughs> well, the message of this movie is very straightforward. Fear. Yeah, definitely shifted tones here, didn't we? As if Valium Girl wasn't creepy enough, we get Madame Hecuba, pretty much every Disney witch if she was stretched on a rack and fed despair. Mother, I'd like you to meet our visitor, Jack. Mm -hmm. No joke, this movie turns into a rather creepy haunted house movie for a bit. Even down to creepy singing in the hallway. Lousy Pazuzu Tabernacle Choir. Enjoy your meal. You'll find it delicious. It's made from the finest virgins. She drugs him with plans to eat him later, because Hansel and Gretel. But her son comes in, who it turns out is the giant, still set to wed the princess. You see, Margaret is under a spell to think he's actually a handsome prince, so they can become royalty. So it's kind of like Beauty and the Beast, except ugly is bad, that's why they're ugly. That's basically the same moral, right? And how she squeeze him out? But Jack wakes up, escapes, and snoops around the castle along with his dog and the castle mice. He comes across their treasury and even an amazingly annoying talking harp. be dreaming. Harps aren't supposed to talk. Of all the things I've seen today, that's the weird stuff! Jack hides, though, as the giant comes in and grabs a toy version of his mother. Okay. Winds her up so she can insult him. You're just a lazy, good-for-nothing lump of blah. You look like something someone left out in the rain. Okay. And then proceeds to smash her. Okay, well that is kind of funny. Does he have a lot of those? Does he smash one every day? Am I supposed to be okay that there's robots in Jack and the Beanstalk? I have so many questions I know I will never get the answer to. Jack decides to steal the gold, of course, and go back home where he shows his mom all the riches he's gathered. This looks like a song for the dog. To find mountain flowers, you have to climb high, don't you agree? And in case you're wondering, no, the dog has never talked previous to this scene and doesn't talk after it either. And yet, he somehow has this big musical solo. He's not even really good. Always we agree. I guess I should be really harsh on that voice, but a dog is singing! I really shouldn't be that critical! And what's Jack's reaction to all of this? You can speak! How come you never said anything to me? Woo! Woo! Or maybe it's another miracle. A sign that I should have stayed to help. Sometimes it just takes a singing dog. Yeah, there is no other explanation outside of that. The dog singing was a miracle! A very, very random miracle. But Jack takes it as a sign to go back and figure out how to snap Margaret out of her trance. The princess must be kissed by someone who is truly brave and courageous. Only that will break the spell. Someone truly brave? Gosh, I wonder if I'm brave enough to even try. Ew! Yeah, this gets... possibly eerie. We know Jack's gotta be like 9 or 10 or something like that, but they never say how old Margaret is. I guess old enough to marry, but even that varies in terms of time period and location. So while you might be feeling awkward about not really knowing if you should feel awkward about this, don't worry, it will quickly disappear after the strangest scene in the entire movie. Just watch. <laughs> Here in front of me tonight Are you happy? It's your wish to be married now Am I right? Are you happy? Will you help each other out? You must tell me if you have any doubt Well then can you? Please, they would be very happy Say that you love him. Say that you love him. 
More sugar frosted nightmares, please! What the enchanted crack pipe are we watching here? Why all the paper people? Why all the trippy animation? Why that priest that sounds like he's getting his testicles clipped to a car battery every other word? Are you happy? Can you? Out is? None of this is explained. It's all just pure madness. To a point where when Jack comes in and finally kisses her, you've totally forgotten about the age thing. It's not even a spark in your mind. All you're thinking is, are you happy? Are you happy? No, I'm very confused and rather afraid. What is this? The kiss, of course, breaks the spell and the giant chases after them. Okay, you know where this is going. The giant chases after him. He cuts down the beanstalk and they live happily ever after. Well, not after an out of nowhere, totally pointless conversation between our two heroes. Aren't you angry with me? I mean, after what I did. Angry? Now why would I be angry with you, Jack? I wouldn't blame you if you were angry, though. I know what I do. Yeah, my kids are getting restless. Can we wrap this up here? They've run from the giant again, only to be confronted by Hecuba. Okay, no joke, if I saw you at the end of the Shining Hallway instead of the two little girls, I'd be more afraid of you! But the giant comes in and, weirdly enough, doesn't stomp our heroes, but instead goes over to stomp the mother. Kind of randomly out of left field. Goodbye. It's made even stranger by the fact that she's not technically under there! But. The movie treats it like she's under there! He's right in front of her, he says goodbye, he puts his foot down, black smoke comes out, presumably destroying her evil, I guess, turning everyone else back to normal, and in the ultimate twist, she was a robot the whole time! If you're confused by this, kids, I'm sorry, no adult can ever help you. None of these ravings make any sense. You might as well put on a David Lynch film to get a dose of reality. But okay, Margaret has to stay with her people and Jack has to go back home. Now leading to him chopping down the beanstalk and killing the giant, right? Well, in yet another strange mood shift, it suddenly turns into a Roadrunner cartoon. Yeah, with the slapstick, his head getting smacked in, railroad tracks, tunnel, the whole thing. Tonal Mad Libs, like none of the scenes are supposed to connect? Even when we do get the climax of Jack chopping down the beanstalk, it still has soothing music that obviously doesn't match! Ah, manslaughter is beautiful! And that was, in my opinion, the weirdest Jack and the Beanstalk film. Is it any good? Well, parts are. There is a lot of good animation, backgrounds, atmosphere, imagination. But yeah, it's pretty inconsistent when it comes to story, characters, and especially the tone. But honestly, that's one of the things that makes it so interesting. The lack of consistency makes it kind of hypnotizing. I can't think of any other fairy tale adaptation on the big screen with choices this specifically odd. So in a weird way, I do kind of recommend checking it out. If you're curious to join in the madness like me, you can find it on DVD- oh my god. Find it on YouTube! Take a look and get sucked into an adventure you'll never forget, no matter how hard you try. I'm the Nostalgia Critic and are you happy? Oh.